Welcome to Actions and Limits. My name is Justin Atherton. I'm the Peak Performance Consultant for Confidence Unchained. With me as always is Paul Fortune. Paul is a mindset coach and the founder of A Call to Action. And together, we make Actions and Limits. Welcome to the show, the podcast where we talk about the actions we can take and the limits we create. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss a single interview that we have coming up. Find us on Instagram and Facebook and stay updated on all the upcoming content. And we're on all of the uh, the normal podcast platforms and uh, recently on uh, Alexa and, and popping up on some other ones. So whichever one you use, uh, we're on there. Uh, and subscribe to those too. Exactly. Um, Paul, we got another great guest coming on. Uh, Adam Parr is going to be on the show. I, I know you were on his podcast, Parsitivity, which is a, a playoff of his last name. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to have him on and another life coach. Um, so it'll be interesting to pick his brain a little bit and see a different aspect. Yeah, I really wanted to bring him on. And the reason why I really want to bring him on, first, he's a, is a tremendous man and his heart's in the right spot. So that's number one why I want to bring him on. Mm-hmm. But number two is he's just starting out. Sure. And it's tough starting out a, as a coach. It's very, very hard. And it's very hard for other podcasters to put you on when you're starting out. They, they, they want to shun you. They're, they want you to be some expert and they don't want to give you a chance. And, um, I don't, I, I never wanted to be that way. And I know Justin, you're, you don't want to be that way. We want to bring people on and allow them to get their message because how are they going to get the experience if people don't give them a shot? So that is the real big reason why I want to bring him on the actions on this podcast, give him, give him a platform to talk about the things he wants to talk about as a life coach and as a podcaster, because I think with, with time, this guy is going to be on the top of his game. And like you said, having that ability to get on and, and talk about it, you know, we talk about, you know, different topics every week and and we bring up the coaching aspects that we both use. And all it does is like re-solidify the things that you are really doing. I know you and I over the last couple of years have really, you know, solidified like our message and how we coach. So like you said, giving, you know, someone else that opportunity to come on the show and really talk about what their message is and their approach to coaching. Um, it, it's rewarding, you know, to be able to give someone that opportunity. And I think we've done that to several people on the show that are just starting out in their path of, you know, being an author, being a coach, like whatever, whatever that is that they're, you know, newly stepping into, obviously we've had some experienced people as well in different aspects of, of their careers. But um, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to to talk to him and and let him, you know, tell us his view on on coaching and, and his you know perspective on how he you know deals with his clients. So I think it'll be interesting to to have him on and, and pick his brain. So yeah, absolutely. So let's get to it. Yeah. So let's go ahead and bring out Adam Parr to the show. So. Adam Parr is a podcast host of Positivity Podcast. He's also a certified and accredited life coach. Uh, his podcast focuses on self-development, positivity, mindset, and much more. And he aims to have a positive impact and provide value through what he does. Uh, he's recorded about 80 episodes during lockdown over the last three or four month period. And he's connected with people from all different backgrounds and walks of life. Adam suffered from PTSD, anxiety, depression around the age of 14, and that was following a traumatic accident that he had where he fell through a glass skylight, and he says this changed his perspective and the way he looked at life. Now, Adam hopes to help others through what he does and how his experience can help them with their own mental health struggles. All right, everyone, welcome Adam, part of the show. Adam, so glad to have you here on the Actions and Limits podcast, man. 
No, I'm happy to be here. I know, um, I know you and Paul have communicated before, you know, we were uh, talking about your content. Um, give our audience a little backstory on how you got into podcasting and how you got into the, the life coaching arena. Yeah, no, okay. I, I basically got into, you know, um, podcasting in January of 2020. And I've kind of always kind of I wanted to do podcasting. I watch a lot of Gary Vee, Joe Rogan. And I've always had a general interest, you know, for people and connecting with other people. And I thought to myself, you know, why not, you know, do a podcast? But two years ago, I had the idea of doing it. But I was always kind of worried about what other people are going to think about it. And, you know, a lot of these kind of like limiting beliefs sure. um, around it. So I, I started in January and I did it on my phone. And I basically uh, started in my car where I do it from. And I just started reaching out to people, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, and connecting with different people. And I thought, you know, why not focus it around kind of mental health, positivity, mindset, motivation, and these kind of, you know, areas. Yeah. Um, so during lockdown in the UK, I was in lockdown for a couple of months, and I ended up doing about 70 plus episodes in that time. And I've just, I've kept on doing it, you know, ever since. And you know, there's quite, you know, quite a lot of traction with it. And when I first started doing that, I didn't take it too serious. Um, you know, I'm doing it on my, on my, on my phone from my car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so that's how I kind of got into it. And, I, you know, I've connected with loads of different people. And then the life coaching side, I got into life coaching because, you know, I've always had that general interest in people um, and mental health as well. And I kind of had my own kind of difficulties with mental health when I was around the age of 13 or 14 years old, where I had a kind of life-changing event where I had an accident where I fell through a skylight on a roof, mm. and which is a glass panel, which allows the light to come through on the roof. Mm. And from that event, I had PTSD, anxiety, depression during, you know, that time. And, you know, this is whilst I was doing my, my grades at school, whilst I was doing my tests at school, my GCSEs in England. And then, you know, through that time, as well as other things that happened in school, it kind of, you know, I had a lot of, you know, mental health kind of issues at the time from that trauma. So, you know, when I came through that, I kind of thought to myself, you know, I want to give something back. I, I just had this kind of, um, this feeling inside that I wanted to help people, you know, but I didn't really know what kind of area I wanted to go in. Where you know I was thinking psychology, you know I was I was going to join I was joining the military at one stage. I just had this kind of need to help and do something. Um, but for trying these different things, I kind of figured out you know coaching seemed quite reasonable. Yeah, Adam, what did you do to overcome this anxiety that you had falling through the roof? You know, dealing with your grades, dealing with the pressure of going to college. All this came at you at the same time, and it sounds like very, very overwhelming. But obviously, you came out the other side okay. Share how you did it. Yeah, no, of course. I, so I, I kind of had, you know, PTSD, anxiety, and depression, and I had a lot of things happening at school as well. You know, I was in the wrong group of people at school. Um, you know, fighting that kind of thing. Um, you know, things at home. And, you know, the age I was in, like, you know, being a teenager was very, you know, your hormones are kicking off and all this kind of thing. And I think I, I kind of dealt with it. What helped me massively, and I will recommend this, is exercise. Sure. I, my mom often talks about it sometimes because I, I joined a leisure center and she said, I saw you, what, I saw you running on the treadmill, but, but I wasn't actually running because of the trauma and everything happening. I was kind of like, kind of semi jogging and then the next week she says you know he was running a bit better and then the week after you know i was you know running properly and i i've, I've always kind of like i even you know i work out you know for my own personal fitness today and i think exercise helped me you know quite a lot and alongside that i was obviously having therapy and hypnosis and these kind of things as well yeah that's something we hear a lot you know and and I'm a big believer in fitness and, you know, the science behind it and how much it really does help you, you know, with the release of endorphins and just, you know, helping boost that confidence. So that's a, 
that's a common thing that we've heard with our guests and in recovering from different uh, traumatic events in and coupling that with therapy and, and other um, other aspects definitely compounds the the healing process right yeah no I agree I mean luckily enough my my mom was um, my mom's a, a, a psychotherapist right now and luckily she she was doing her training for hypnotherapy mm. around, you know, the time of, of uh, that event. And she was, I think she was doing her master's, I think. She was, you know, still studying her master's. So she would kind of give me hypnosis and things like that to kind of help. Um, and, then, and then obviously I was seeing somebody. But uh, yeah, but um, hypnosis is a good good way of helping through that. And I think, you know, exercise, hands down. Yeah, the hypnosis I'm not super familiar with, you know, as far as the therapy goes, is uh, explain that process a little bit to our audience. Like, what's your insight as far as that? Yeah, I mean, when I had hypnosis, it was, I think, to, you know, ground me, to, you know, keep, uh, because I think I'm not, you know, I don't know the deep side of it, but I think it kind of accesses positive, like your subconscious mind. Okay. And can almost kind of reprogram the way that you think. Um, so yeah, I found hypnosis to be very like, you know, relaxing, you know, with the anxiety that I was experiencing at the time, the trauma, mm. the kind of anxiety kind of helped just keep me a bit more grounded and relaxed and more in the moment, I think. Sure. Do you have a life coach for yourself? Um, I haven't got one at the minute. I, but when, when I was doing my training, you know, to become a life coach, um i did you know kind of have kind of people who helped me you know through that you know to understand what it's like to be that you know to be the client sure from the other from the other angle so that was that was very interesting you know because i'd never kind of had that before i never experienced the other the other side of it yeah it's you know that's one thing that, that we hear a lot as well you know the coaches out there realize the important the, the importance of like having a coach in, in so many different aspects, whether it's on the business side, personal side, uh, mm. you can look at all the uh, examples as, you know, professional athletes that have five, six different types of coaches and, and how really important that is to get you in that mindset, like you said, of being on the, the client side before you can actually go out there and, and help others, you know, learn as well. So um, I know Paul and I have talked about that multiple times about how important it is for, for coaches to have coaches or other mm. type of mentors, you know, in your life. Mm. So talk a little bit about, you know, the, the way, you know, your viewpoint of, of, of coaching, like how do you approach that with your clients and what do you take from your own experiences mm. and, and help your clients overcome? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I find like, you know, through coaching, you know, it's having that empathy, you know, that is a key thing as a coach, you know, that empathy and understanding of the other person and, uh, you know, listening to them, you know, just gauging with them, really tuning in with them. And, you know, they, they feel, you know, reassured, you know, that you're present and you, you know, you care. And I think, you know, with my, my experiences of what I've, had you know in the past you know kind of helped me to be you know very empathic very understanding and i i i just kind of have this ability just to tune in you know to people you know if they're going through something i i pick up on that sure and i think you know probably i mean i've always been very aware as a person um you know my mom often talks about you know when i was a baby you know i was very aware um and you know, picking up on like noises and things like this. Like I was, I was eight weeks premature. So I kind of, I was ready to just, you know, get into the world. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I can't, and even now I'm quite aware as a person. Uh, but yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the previous events just kind of, he, you know, kind of helped me to uh, understand people and um, pick up on things. You know, as a coach for myself, you know, when I do a, you know, consultation with a new client, there's expectations that we both have to set. And a lot of times these clients come in and thinking that I have this magic wand that I'll be able to wave in front of their face to fix whatever needs to be fixed. 
And uh, obviously that's just not reality. So what expectations do you set with your clients starting the, the sessions off? Yeah, no, I, that's good uh, question. I, I think like with that, as you said, like, you know, people kind of think, you know, they're going to have a session and then they're going to be like, be done, you know, find out whatever's wrong and be fixed within like a week. I, I, you know, I kind of say to people, you know, this is, you might, things, things, well, things might come up for you that you didn't really know were there. And then, you know, it, the time, it might t- may take a set amount of time, kind of, you know, it may take a couple of weeks. It might, it may take longer or something may come up within this, this period. And you may need to, you know, see someone else to, to deal with that thing. If it's, you know, it's been not within my capabilities of doing that. If it's, you know, more deeper. Sure. Yeah. And one thing, you know, I've heard a lot is, you know, people have this misconception that, you know, life coaching is a lot like therapy and there, there is some clear differences and it, it seems like, you know, you you're very clear on that. And if you, you know, have a client that comes up to certain aspects that they need to say, Hey, maybe, maybe you need to go in, into therapy to work on this as well. What's your viewpoint and how would you explain to your clients the difference between life coaching and being in therapy? I think for, for me and the way that I see it and understand it is coaching. Coaching is very kind of person centered. It's very here in the now, you know, and kind of goal orientated, like where are you now, mm-hmm. you know, what is it that's going on? where you know where's he want to be going and there's, there's different avenues of coaching but you know it may touch you know, it may touch on the little on the past a little bit sure. but it kind of doesn't keep you in the past it kind of like okay there it is here you are okay you know where we're we going kind of thing mm-hmm. um it was i think therapy you know if it's counseling um you know you're, you're dealing with the past you're dealing with the traumas and that's it and it's it's going over the past that's yeah. that's kind of my understanding of there's another thing that comes up uh too uh you know because people think of therapy and coaching very similar they think that these people are coming in broken you know what i mean they're they're coming in with these all these problems and, and you need all this fixing but a lot of times it's not about that it's about reaching goals reaching uh, accomplishments that you want to uh, to go with having a sounding board to move yourself forward you know the clients that i have are not broken at all and they actually inspire me a lot of, all of them they all inspire me in different ways so put it in your own words adam on on how your clients are and and what you expect from them yeah no i i um I that's a really good point and you know like you know my my clients you know all different and you know they're all in different situations and i find that you know they do you know inspire me because sometimes you know they've been through like you know certain things and you see them change and you see them like you know evolve you know and shift and it's quite powerful to see that you know when you when someone's been through certain uh, situations and then they're, you know, untangling that kind of ball of string almost and you see them shift and it's just, you know, it's quite, re- it's quite rewarding because you're just holding that space for them. You know, you're giving them that opportunity to, um, to deal with things. I like that. You know, I, I, I've talked about that with, with some, some different people, the idea of that holding that space and just being there to, to let people, you know, work through whatever it is they're working through. And, you know, like Paul said, you like, finding that motivation and and when you have that client just kind of get that aha moment it's like boom and, mm. and 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 then you end up getting inspired by what they're doing because you never really know where the conversation is going to go you know you may have a an idea you're like hey maybe it's going to go this way and then your client completely shifts and and goes in a completely different direction so i, I really i really like that but adam what what are your what is your what's your future goals for this? Like with the coaching, with the podcast, like what are you looking to create? Like, what are you excited about in the next few years? Yeah, no, definitely. I, um, I would say that, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, the podcast growing. I, 
you know, one day I would like, you know, to have, you know, studio and things like that. Sure. But um, I, I think, you know, with the coaching, the podcasting, I, you know, I just want to, you know, have an impact and to try, what's the right word? To try, yeah, have an impact and um, inspire with people, you know, to, to do podcasts, to, you know, to be better, be better versions of themselves and, you know, to, to understand that, you know, anything, anything's really possible, you know, if you, if you want to. You know, I find that uh, coaches have niches, like for instance, Justin, he deals with confidence with men, especially in high, high stressful situations, mm -hmm. CEOs, military, et cetera. And I deal with people with their mindset and improving their mindset having them move forward, making them feel present in the day, making them more productive at work, and more importantly, feel better on the inside. What is your niche? Um, I would say, I'd say mine is, you know, I'm very kind of goal orientated. Um, I like to, you know, see where people are at and what's kind of like holding them back and, you know, what needs to change in order to, to get them to, you know, that, that next stage. So you ask them to set a goal for themselves? Yeah, you know where they where they are, what they want, you know what what's going on, and sure. kind of like you know what do they need to do in order to get to that next stage, and you know what's holding them back, and you know like uh, LinkedIn beliefs. I'm very, like, that's kind of where you know that's that's kind of what I'm figuring out that my niche is. I'm very goal orientated. I like you know I can kind of see people where they are, where they need to be, and just kind of holding that space. I mean I'm. I'm still trying to figure it out, you know? I mean, that, but that recently that's kind of like where I'm at with it. Sure. Yeah, I like that, that you know, idea. And I think that can help a lot of people out. Maybe people that are, you know, struggling to find out what they want to do or maybe they want to, you know, change a job or change a scenery and figuring out like, hey, I, like, I don't know what I like yet, you know? And so, like you said, holding that space for them to be able to, to figure that out and guide them through mm -hmm. that process. So tell us, tell us a little bit about your podcast, man. You said you did, you know, all these different episodes, like what is the, the theme of your, your podcast and what type of guests do you normally have on your show? People like me, um, tremendous yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People. Yeah. I've had, I've had Paul on um, a number of times and we, we really gel and we really get on and um, have a great podcast and it's very like, you know, very natural. And, um, I've had I've had people on uh, the kind of theme, like I said, is kind of set around you know mindset, personal development, positivity, um, and connecting with people and seeing what they do and why they do it, and you know what 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 inspiration can this these people provide you know to the audience and give back, and I think that's something that's it's kind of about is giving something back, you know, sure and. I've had different people on from ex-military um, authors, you know, co life coaches like Paul, um, people who from loads, you know, I think different backgrounds, um, authors, um, you know, everyday people, you know, so pretty, and pretty wide range, right? Pretty wide range, and and the thing is, not all my episodes kind of focus on positivity, mindset, motivation. Some of them. Um, like what I did today, you know, I was talking about technology and conspiracies and things like this. So I, I'm quite open as well to, to, you know, have open podcasts, but I try and give it around, you know, positive, you know, positivity and, and advice. Sure. Let's talk about technology for a moment. Uh, where do you see, you know, AI playing a role in, in the job market in let's say 10 years from now? Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, I think I, I find AI pretty scary. I think there's good. I think there's. I think there's a lot of positives. A lot of you know, it's that balance. I think. I think certain jobs, you know, in the job market, excuse me, I won't. won't we won't need people in certain jobs. If that makes sense, like, um, I think is it the car industry? Mm. You know, I, I saw an article around you know about uh, car manufacturers and, and the factories that robots. Are doing it much faster and quicker than people and people are losing their jobs in sure. um, certain industries i mean that's that's the fear that's what i get scared about you know that's what what makes me quite fearful of ai is uh you know making 
humans kind of obsolete in certain industries or sectors. But don't you think that will create other jobs in other areas and other sectors of, of work? I like to feel, yeah, I like to hope so. Yeah. Yeah, I think Paul and I have talked about it a little bit, you know, either the software engineers working on the robots, you know, maintenance on those, you know, machines, because they're not, you know, cybersecurity. Yeah, all, yeah. all of those different aspects. Yeah. It's it's pretty interesting to, to, to think about, you know, the future and all of it holds. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying, Adam, there is a lot of fear around that aspect of, you know, people maybe thinking they're going to lose their jobs. And, um, you know, it, to an extent, yes, those some, certain jobs will be deleted and obsolete. But uh, like Paul brought up, I think that there will be some other ones that may come around and and, and turn into some different uh, venues for people to explore and different goals for people to set, you know, different mm-hmm. areas for, for people to look into, you know. Um, and, you know, maybe as far as coaching, that could be something, you know, pointing them in the right direction. Be like, hey, I think my job is going to be obsolete. Well, it's like, mm-hmm. hey, well, what what excites you, right? Like, what are you what are you interested mm-hmm. in? What would you mm-hmm. like to do if your job did get deleted one day, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's the kind of situation that we're kind of like finding with COVID. You know, a lot of people have been thinking about their jobs and what else they want to do. Um, mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people are in that kind of headspace right now, where yeah. you know they've had a lot of time to think, they've had a lot of time to look at their life and the situation and, you know, what's not working for them and, you know, what, what it is that they want to do. I know loads of people who've, you know, been in, you know, chefs in hospitality and, or in hosp- hospitality mainly, because that's kind of the background I've been working in previously. Sure. And, you know, in that COVID time, they then realized I'm going to create my own business. I'm going to change it up and do this. So I think a lot of people are kind of in that headspace. So what's some advice oh, I do you would agree. give people? Sorry. What's some advice you would give people that are in that headspace, you know, to, to work through that? I, I would say personally, like you just focus on, you know, where, you know, focus on your energy and, and what makes you happy and, you know, uh, do the things that make you happy. Even, you know, even if that kind of scares you, because like when, when oh, things start opening up here, when things started opening up here, I, I got back into work and I was working at, you know, a few cafes on the side, but I, I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. And I realized, you know, I need to do what ultimately makes me happy, you know, like I'm doing my coaching, but, you know, if, if I can get a bit of income on the side, doing other, you know, other jobs and things, kind of go and, you know, listen to my values. I, I do agree with you. I think that uh, with technology growing, Uh, with AI, I think there's going to be this renaissance of entrepreneurship, especially with this newer generation coming up. Um, I I don't see a lot of them working that nine to five gig. I I think that they they want different things uh, than that. So it'll be interesting to see and what innovations that are coming out of uh, COVID and, you know, and because of AI, Um, exciting times that we're living in. And I'm very excited to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff. Adam, share with our audience like how they can reach out to you, how they can you know check out your podcast. Um, tell us the name of your podcast, Adam. Yeah, it's a bit of a tongue twister, but it's um, it's the Positivity Positivity Podcast. A little play on and your your last name there, Positivity. I like it. Yeah, like it. yeah, because my my surname is Paul, and I kind of thought to myself, you know, kind of focus on positivity positivity sure and it's on uh, amazon music now um spotify apple um it's on pretty much most of the streaming services awesome. and i've also got it on youtube now and um you can find me on instagram at positivity 94 okay great you have a website people can check out or what's the best way for people to reach out to you uh, if it's not for your podcast yeah, on my, um, I've not got a solid. I'm in, I'm in the process of making a website at the minute. Sure. But um, I'm on LinkedIn as well, Adam Adam Paul. But on my on my Instagram, I've got I've got a thing called Flow Page. And flow page. It's got on Flow Page, and it's got all my links all in one. Place. Oh, okay, got it, got it. Awesome. 
So Adam, we like to wrap up the show with our guests and, you know, thinking about the title of our podcast, you know, Actions and Limits, what would you say is one action that people can implement to make an immediate change in their lives? That's a really good question. An action, can you repeat, an action to make immediate change? I would say just just do it. Just just take that, kind of feel the fear and do it anyway, kind of thing, you know, like, um, there's a good quote that I like to say, and it's, you know, just get get comfortable, get comfortable being uncomfortable, just whatever that is. Yeah. You know, um, you know, like thinking and thinking and doing are both two different things. Yeah, exactly. Like the Nike commercial says, right? Just do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like it. Just get out there, get comfortable being uncomfortable. You know, and I, I like what you pointed out there at the end that thinking and doing are two very separate things. And uh, that's a, that's a big insight for people to have. So the, the, the other side of that, these limits, you know, these self-imposed yeah. limits that we have, I'm sure you see it, you know, being a coach with some of your clients, what would you say is the biggest limit that we impose on ourselves that we need to remove? Um, I would say, you know, telling ourselves we're not good enough mm. based on, you know, our, our experiences from the past, the way, you know, the, the, the kind of thoughts that we've taken from those experiences, whether, you know, whether people said to us, you know, we're not good at that or just the natural kind of response that we took sure. and um, just believing in yourself and just telling yourself you are good enough because, you know, if, if someone else can do something, you know, so can you. And, you know, our, our, you know what we think, what, what we think we, we become. So, yes, and that's really I, important. Exactly. Bringing up the, the, the thoughts again, you know, the difference, mm. you know, but thinking about something can create your actions, can create, you know, who you become. But I, I like that. Just, you know, just get out there and do it and, and stop telling yourself that you're not good enough to do that because, mm. No one else is telling you that it's, it's coming from that inner critic. Right. So yeah, Adam, great insight. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the actions and limits podcast and sharing you know, your story and the things that you're involved in. Um, I'm sure that our audience got a lot out of it and man, Paul, another great guest. I'm, I'm so glad you brought Adam on the show. Uh, I know, I know Paul likes to get on other people's podcasts and, and bring him on over here. So Everyone go ahead and check out Adam Parr's podcast, Positivity. And uh, Adam, thanks for coming on the show, man. No, no, you're welcome. I'm uh, happy to be here. It's been, it's been a really, really good time. I really appreciate it. Glad we could have Adam on the show, um, another podcaster and a life coach and someone that you were on his show, you know, a couple of times already. So hopefully, uh, you know, our viewers, our audience will check him out as well. Um, I think he's, uh, he's on the younger side, so he's got, you know, a long way to go, but it's, it's nice to see that um, he's trying to figure out, you know, what, what he's passionate about. And, and, and it seems to be, it's about helping other people. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you hit it on the nail on the head. He's a little bit on the the infant stages of, of his career, obviously, but that's good, right? Yeah. You got to start somewhere. And um, you know what? His heart is in the right place. And that is the most important thing. And when I, when I, you know, look at a coach for myself or, or for anything else, I, I look at how true are they uh, of a person they are. That's That's the most important thing. You know, if they're over salesy and they might have a lot of information, I'm turned off. Sure. Um, so if you're sincere, if I feel that you're sincere, that goes a, a lot longer way with me than anything else. So, yeah, he might be a little bit inexperienced, but he's going to get the experience and his heart's in the right place and he's going to go places with that. Yeah. The, the, the fact that he's just pumping out all these interviews, getting people on his show and and he talked about, you know, different things that he's you know, tried to be involved with and just wanting to, to help the community, help other people. And, you know, 
either people dealing with like, you know, traumatic events that have caused PTSD, like he had. Um, so I, I think that's an accurate statement saying that, you know, that his heart is in the right place. Like he really wants to help other people. And, um, you know, I, I wish him success. I'm glad he could come on the show. And uh, I'm sure you'll be a, a guest of his again, maybe. And, uh, you know, I, I may even hop on his podcast as well. So um, glad that we could have, you know, Adam Parr on the show with us. So he was a good guest. Um, let's go ahead and wrap up the show with another segment of Ask Paul Anything. Um, I had a question I pulled out here. It's kind of just a random question, but I'm curious on, on what your answer is going to be on it. This is from uh, Jessica in Nevada, and she says, Paul, how do you feel about putting pineapple on a pizza? This is a, a sore subject for me, Justin. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Pineapple, uh, and I know this is bad. I know this is like worse than political talk, this pineapple pizza thing. I mean, the people go crazy on this. And I'm far on one side on this issue. I'm sorry I am. Pineapple does not belong on pizza. I'm sorry. It doesn't. Sorry. I love pineapple and I love pizza, but they just don't mix. <laughs> I think that's a song. <laughs> is it a song? <laughs> I think MC Hammer said something like, just don't mix. They just don't mix. Uh, you know, I, I feel the opposite, man. Like I, I'm okay with pineapple on pizza, but you know, like you like you said, it, it is almost like a, like a political divide there, right? It's like people have such strong opinions <laughs> about this matter. So I, I I knew you'd have an entertaining uh, response to that one. So glad we uh, glad we had that question come in. Um, Everyone, make sure to continue to send your questions into actionsandlimits at gmail.com, and you can get your questions featured on the show. Great week, Paul. Uh, another great guest. Uh, we're, we're wrapping up this year pretty fast, man, so uh, I'm excited to, to keep on plugging away. And one more, one more thing about that. I don't like to eat hot fruit unless it's a pie, so that's another thing. I don't like the taste of hot fruit. So, so yeah, <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I had to get that out. So yes, great, great guest. Great interview. I mean, this is, to, we're going towards the end of the year, right? The next one will be our Christmas episode, then our New Year's episode, then we got the new year. So uh, exciting things coming ahead of for us. Yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to, to, to keep on plugging away at it and, and keep on doing what we're doing, man. For Justin Atherton, this is Paul Fortune. We'll see you next week. All right. See you next Monday. Thank you for listening to the show. Don't miss an episode. Click and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on your favorite podcast platform and find us on Instagram and Facebook under Actions and Limits to stay updated on all our upcoming content. Continue to email the show at actionsandlimits at gmail.com for our segment Ask All Anything. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week.